I'm Regina Taylor at the National Museum of Mexican Art. I'm talking to Martin Castro, lawyer, civil rights advocate. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Regina. I appreciate it. Thanks for asking me to be here. Uh, we are in the National Museum of Mexican Art. That's right. And it is the only accredited uh, Latino art museum in this country. Yes, in fact, uh, any museum, whether it's art or culture, we are the only Latino museum that has received accreditation from the American Association of Museums. We have to comport with every rule that the Guggenheim has to, mm. and so we're very proud of that. Can you talk to me about One Voice Museums? Sure. Like our museum, uh, One Voice Museums are those organizations, uh, whether it's in our case an art museum or whether it's a historical museum, that tells a community's story from our own voice, mm -hmm. not filtered by another culture, especially the dominant culture, but saying to others, here's what we view our culture, our art, our music, our history to be, sharing it not only with our children and their children's children, but with our allies, those who want to learn about our community and support our community and be uh, partners with us. Now, you started off wanting to be an astronaut. That's right. <laughs> like I think many kids, particularly many uh, kids of my generation, we uh, grew up seeing the, uh, the moon landings and we saw the uh, Mars, the first uh, you know, rovers on Mars, and it inspired me mm. that there was more to the world than just the four corners of my neighborhood. Right. And to that, be an explorer. To be an explorer, to be, again, one of the first, because at the time there were yes. no Latino or Latina astronauts. Right. And so my desire was not only to be an astronaut, but be the first Hispanic astronaut. Mm -hmm. And so I was very serious about it. I wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, and I had my whole future pla planned out. And as a young boy, I had a, an injury that put me on bed rest for about you know, a year. And in that time, I was, this is before email and before you know, all, those, all these things that we take for granted now. So I would write letters to astronauts, uh, literally to NASA, and they would send me photos and information. And so I learned and read as much as I could, and that was my plan. Uh, when I was uh, about 16 years old, my dad, who was a social worker, decided he was going to run for political office. He ran for Democratic Ward Committeeman. Mm -hmm. And during his campaign, I was a volunteer. I did everything from helping him collect campaign dollars to being the gopher at the office. Whatever was needed, I wanted to help my dad get elected. But in that process, we also did some campaigning around the city because it was very unique for a Latino to be running for that position. Mm -hmm. And I saw that a lot of the people that had their hands on the reins of power in Chicago, people that were making decisions affecting the lives of my family and friends and community in South Chicago, didn't come from my neighborhood. They didn't look like me. Uh, they did not understand my community. And many of them were lawyers. Mm -hmm. And so I looked up, where did these folks go? And I, I saw, oh, there's a lawyer from DePaul. There's another loyal, lawyer from Loyola. And they're judges. And, right. and even the mayor at the time, I thought, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to go to law school because I want to be in a position one day to try to affect positive change on my community. And so I switched gears. Although I never lost a love for science and astronomy. And to this day, uh, my sons and I are, are big fans of that. But uh, you know, I've tried to meet that goal of trying to have a positive impact using law initially as the vehicle for my career. You say that, um, you say that education is a civil right. It absolutely is a civil right. Mm -hmm. Because that American dream that we talk about, mm -hmm. it's not going to become an American reality unless we have something that catalyzes that change. And to me, education is that. Mm -hmm. Because without my education, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you about the things I've done since I was a boy till today. Um, and in fact, it's not just my view. I, uh, President Obama shares that view with me. He and I were talking about this issue about a year and a half ago, and I asked him. And he said to me, Marty, it would be education, mm -hmm. because that's what will change the world. And so I, I agree wholeheartedly with that, because it's what I lived. You know, I'm, I'm exhibit A to that. Mm -hmm. And so, so are my children, because had I not gotten this education, I could not make their opportunity better. But it's more than just about an individual or a family. We in the Latino community and other underserved communities, underprivileged, particularly communities of color, we need to take that education and catalyze change in the community and beyond that in our state and our country because education is a game changer. And to me, that's, there's no other thing that can make the profound difference um, generationally, individually, and that's why we started New Futuro, was to use not only examples of success stories in our Latino community, those of us who by leaps of faith made it where we are today, mm -hmm. but to take technology and marry it to that and be able to reach students in an unprecedented way. How so? Well, I and those that came before me, you know, we're able to transfer our social capital individual at a time. Or maybe if we're lucky to go to a school and talk, you might reach 50 kids at a time. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you're lucky, you might even 
change the lives of one or two of those kids. But imagine if you can use technology and instead of speaking to 50 kids in a classroom, you're speaking to 5,000 or 50,000 using the internet and the technology that New Futuro uses, at the same time marrying it to grassroots, community-based mm -hmm. college prep fairs. Mm -hmm. So we've taken the historic information and way of doing it and melded it so that it's not only high touch, but it's also high tech. Mm -hmm. Using the technology we have available to us that I didn't have growing up to be able to not just be able to send and respond to an email quicker, but to be able to change a life more quickly. Uh, so keeping it very hands-on, keeping it about uh, one's legacy, about the, the history, mm -hmm. and, and marrying it to the present and the future. Yes, absolutely. And that's something that I think if you, we walk around this museum, you'll see. Mm -hmm. We have, as we walk through here, you'll see history and culture, mm -hmm. but it's all connected. We have the Aztecs here, and we go all the way to the present day. Mm -hmm. And that is, every one of those steps is who we are as a Mexican and Mexican-American community. And that story is something that we replicate today and we replicate in different areas, whether it's education, politics, business. Uh, we stand on the shoulders of those that came before us. Yes. And luckily in our community, many of those that came before us built the path for us to take the next step. Wonderful. Well, let's me. walk. Sure. Can you tell me about this work? I can't believe sure. it's made of paper mache. Yeah, believe it or not, gold-painted uh, paper mache. You know, piñatas are also made of paper mache, but this is clearly uh, taking that art to a new level. Yes. And it represents both the clash as well as the ultimate melding of the two cultures, uh, actually really multiple cultures, when you look at the various indigenous cultures that made up Mexico when it was discovered uh, by the Europeans. But the, the cultural clash of those two larger cultures into what is now the Mexican and Mexican-American culture. So here, you know, we begin with uh, Ferdinand and Isabel, the uh, Spanish monarchs who told uh, Columbus to go discover. And so you'll see the progression to the uh, indigenous peoples as well as what ended up happening in terms of melding both of the cultures. So you have the Europeans who came to conquer and to, to take our gold as well as to impart Catholicism and Christianity uh, to the new world. But we already had our own religion and our own cultures here. We had the Mayans and the Aztecs and the Toltecs and the Incas and the Olmecs. And those two cultures came together both violently as well as ultimately in a way, in a way that was very complementary to one another. We see uh, Jesus hanging on not a cross but on Cuauhtique, the mother goddess of the Aztecs. She was the creator goddess. And yet here we have the cr Christianity and Catholicism overlaid on that. And the primary uh, goddess of the Aztecs was Tonantzin. And that is uh, something that the uh, Spaniards used to convert uh, uh, the Aztecs and the Mayans to Catholicism by taking Tonantzin and her, her temple and building onto that the Church of the Virgin Mary, in this case, the Virgen de Guadalupe. So they made her look dark like the indigenous people. And to us, she's the mother of the Americas. Yet you see in her, we see in her, both the European as well as our, our indigenous ancestry. And so here you have both of those coming together, but you also see some of the violent clashes that led to that. The Aztecs fighting the Spaniards and literally living and dying together. You see the basically slavery that existed in new colonial Mexico, yet you see here also the culture of the Aztecs. They discovered Tenochtitlan. The, the mythology is that they found an eagle on a cactus, and that's where they built the great city of Mexico that was one of the most incredible facilities, both physically as well as intellectually, compared to some of the European cities when they, they were discovered by the Europeans. They had teaching and learning and culture and history and agriculture, all of that here. So it wasn't some um, a tribe that had been lost in the wilderness. This was a very evolved and complex culture which merged with this very complex culture to create who we are today as Mexicans and Mexican-Americans. So that's all embodied in this uh, small and beautiful piece of art.